Hey, I'm Frank. This is the Golden Mullet. It's a 1998 Chevy Express van, and we've been living together for four years. The van was completely stock when I got it. It had uh, like the, the four captain chairs, kind of like that one. Your typical conversion family traveling vehicle, but it basically started with a sheet of plywood right across the back and uh, like plastic bins to keep things kind of just stored. And then this version here is I uh, hopefully the last version because I've done a lot of renovations, but it's fully insulated. It's set up for what I need and uh let me take you on inside this is just a three burner propane cooktop it came from uh someone's end of the driveway they were just had a for sale sign and they wanted 60 bucks for it i ended up getting it for 20. and it was out of an old uh, pop-up tent trailer so these are all good things to to source out is uh, the used market or just keep your eyes peeled because you never know where the deal is kind of like a desk ish eating area here and then I've got just a little bit of storage space underneath figured I'd make a dual purpose yeah my sink is uh, just a regular little sink under mount uh, works with the foot pump and I went ahead and just drained you know made the drain go right to outside the foot pump which is empty force is gonna hook me up with some water <laughs> I'm really proud of this tap because it cost me literally less than two dollars just just goes to show that you can make anything work you don't necessarily have to spend big money you can just find something and make it work this would be my fresh water tank uh that, that i typically just use for dishes so i would per, for my own personal liking uh city water would go in there to do the dishes and then I've got extra drinking water, which I try and source naturally. Uh, but in a pickle, if I do run out of water, I could just fill it up with one of my extra jugs. Wait, I really have to show this because mm -hmm. I feel like people need to know this. In the beginning, like when I first put a hose into this, the hose would curl and then I couldn't drain the water all the way. So my solution was to take a fitting that screws right into it's the same thread so this this pipe just literally it guides it to the bottom of the tank uh, two deep cycle six volts connected to make 12 volts the amp hours is 230 amp hours which literally powers right now the heater the lights and I charge my devices with those batteries I don't have um, an inverter because my last setup I had an inverter and it set it just seemed inefficient I've got uh, 280 watts of solar up on the roof uh, that comes into an MPPT charger I also have a DC to DC Renogy charger just in case those long times of periods without Sun the lighting setup is just simple little LED puck lights I went with the I went with the warm white because I find the cool white a little bit too overwhelming. Basically, yeah, just a freaking boom, 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 boom. Just like home, just like your home. <laughs> Except I don't have to pay for my hydro bill. <laughs> yeah, this is the the pantry. I'm in the middle of renovations right now, so I'm kind of just making, figuring out where everything's gonna go and and making it work the best for for my setup. This is my hamper back here. I multi-purposed, I, I kept some space from the back and I just integrated my hamper into this little thing. Just a couple of mason jar storage there for some dry goods and oil. It was a must to be insulated. I wanted this vehicle to be a four season vehicle without worrying about 
uh, being too cold. So I did the R14 on the roof, on the walls, and it's four inches thick. So that's why like on the window here, you see that's basically, I did like a, a framing and then I just added the yeah, insulating bats. I didn't put vapor barrier or anything. Just trusted that things were gonna roll out and not mold. R14 rock wall insulation is what I ended up using. So for the floor, I ended up just putting inch and a half foam board, the pink foam board, and then uh, some wood that I found in a dumpster for the subfloor. Tell me a little bit about um, why you chose to do cedar paneling for your interior. I mean, obviously because cedar smells really good, for one. But number two, it's been said that cedar is good at holding moisture without necessarily rotting out. So I figured in a space that is constantly battling with moisture, uh, it would be safe and effective. And yeah, like I said, it smells good. <laughs> the bed is just a five inch piece of foam with a two inch uh, memory foam topper. And, and I mean, it's a temporary setup now and it's just like one by two slats going across every, every like three inches. Uh, and underneath I keep uh, some tools, got the kitty litter under here for Sunny and I guess basically the underbed is storage and uh, th this is it. This is what you got. It doesn't come out any bigger. Uh, it's just enough for what I need and for I guess for what Sunny and I need. So eventually um, I'd like to have like a wood stove kind of on top of a storage dresser area. So this is where I, my wardrobe is at this moment. So the idea is to yeah, build a dresser and have a nice wood stove on top. That way um, I can give my little diesel heater a break sometime and uh, burn some, some wood that is collected from uh, urban areas or just a dead tree that's fallen on the side. For me, it felt important to have the batteries stay at like a decent temperature because um, in my previous build, I, I didn't really have a space for air to flow around the batteries, but I, I built what is a vent underneath the batteries. So the heater duct goes into this box, which flows air on the inside, but also um, keeps the batteries toasty. The clothesline four years ago was the first modification I made to the van. And it just it just stuck because it just makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I like skateboarding. It's, it's a way for me to keep my mental health sane. And then the longboard. But they actually, they just, nice little setup that just opens up and comes out nice and easy. Just a little holder. In this build, I didn't think I was actually going to have space for the, for the boards. And then I just looked up and I was like, that would make great decoration. I used a U-Haul moving blanket uh, for, the, for the back and for the front. And to kind of add insulating value on this window and then just finish it off with a nice tapestry. For these two windows here, I was able to source out some, some extra foam, so I just put them right in there. And it adds a good, I feel like it adds you know good thermal value. The Rough Country lift, uh, to my understanding, is marketed for other vehicles, uh, but it also works on this vehicle. It is a four inch lift with uh, upgraded upper control arms. Uh, upgraded leaf pack at the back so for the front it was a, it was a bolt-on spindle and that, that was it so it didn't change like the suspension geometry at the back I did uh, a leaf spring that has a bigger arch and then I added a two inch lift block so that's how we raised the van four inches nice and then it's on it's on 33 inch tires yeah, nice. the next ones are gonna be 35s. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea, like the idea with the lift, was to because I I, I want to say like I did two and a half to three years of solid like kind of road traveling, finding the spots like off, you know, just the the classic touristy spots, and I just I just knew 
from growing up like exploring in the woods that there's there's more out there but it's not necessarily accessible with like a, a regular stock vehicle so I, I wanted to lift it so that we can get to some more remote areas in case the zombie apocalypse happens you know <laughs> for the rooftop we just went ahead and put a max air deluxe fan for good airflow when you're cooking or even in the summer when it gets real hot at night just open up the screen window and fire up that that screen it keeps nice fresh air coming in shovel just in case you need to do some recovery you never know especially if you're in the woods and then a lot of people ask what these red things are but i feel like most people would know at this point but they're traction boards that the van is only two-wheel drive it's not four by four yet and then up top the 280 watt solar panel that does tilt to get more efficiency but honestly i never use it everybody knows about these heaters it's a diesel heater um but it, it's yeah it's the five kilowatt version uh, i would say it's a perfect size for this this size of vehicle or even a little bit bigger yeah it was a it was a online find shipped right to your door it was a 177 dollars canadian and it it is worth every every penny and it comes with everything you need it comes with like the tank it comes with the filter it, everything to run it comes with you just have to install it yourself and how easy was the installation process i would say uh, for 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 me it was it was simple enough uh, i would say for someone else it could be complicated but there's uh, an abundance of information and videos online uh, so if you're unsure yourself uh, you can refer to one of those videos and and get through definitely I've, I've only run it for a few months so I don't know what it's like in the dead of winter uh, but for like a minus five night I would say it's it used uh, 750 milliliters of diesel with the price right now that's a dollar ten per night for like a six hour six hour run they call them diesel heat exchangers so the combustion air intake and exhaust are separate and and exhaust outside and then inside the vehicle there's an air intake and an outtake so this is where the it draws the air in and it moves the air across um yeah let's just open it up so people can see it so there's a combustion fuel burning inside of here that happens so this whole unit gets nice and hot so this moves the air across the hot and then the hot air into the vehicle yeah so we got the the 40 amp renogy dc to dc battery charger uh, and it allows um the the house batteries to get charged while the vehicle is driving if i so choose uh, so because it's not always sunny outside and solar depends on sun <laughs> Quick little interruption from today's video. I just wanted to tell you guys about a few little things that we got going on here at Different Media, especially for those interested in van life. We've got a new van life centered podcast releasing this Thursday, its first episode. And we actually, it's gonna be a weekly thing. And uh, there's so much good information in there for any aspiring van dwellers. The other thing that I wanna tell you about is a trip that I'm doing this year, 2022, across Canada. So if any of you live in vans or want to be featured on different media with a van tour, reach out to me through the uh, contact information in the description. The other and third thing that I wanna tell you about is a membership Discord that is available for a free trial. And this Discord is centered around helping you build out your van. So if you are getting into van life, there's a lot of challenges and a lot of costly mistakes and time consuming research that needs to be done. And I've done all of that research and I can help you do that uh, through this Discord, one-on-one -on -one communication with me, helping you solve those issues, save you time and money. So check out the link in the description for that Discord and join the free trial. Why do you live in a van? I live in a van because I want to. <laughs> I guess I live in a van now because I've tried living like a different lifestyle and I guess I didn't line up with that. And at the, at the time that I chose to, to build and move into a van, 
just just seeing that community I kind of it felt like I aligned a little bit better with that style of living and so I didn't think twice and I just gave it a shot and it has been working out and but it like it has its challenges for sure the biggest challenges is like the the not the routine but like you setting your roots and kind of creating like long lasting friendships physically is is more of a challenge there's always the the power of like social media and uh and that technology or even just like hot water hot water is a challenge not having hot water but these are all things that you learn that I've learned to to adapt with and I'm okay because the the state of my mental health is better now than it was when I had hot water <laughs> what do I do for a bathroom I've got a um, a funnel let me just whip it out a funnel in a tube that just goes right to outside of course I'm not gonna do this like in a parking lot I'm I pick where I'm gonna do this uh, but for for the majority of the bathrooms, I use public bathrooms. Biggest benefit for me, van life is kind of regaining my time back. Because I don't have to spend as much in a month, I don't have to work as much, it gives me more time to do the things that, I guess, raise my mental health and raise my my overall like mood. I'm able to spend more time outside. I'm able to spend more time um, contacting the ones that I love and be able to spend more time with the feline friend, Sunny. Uh, more time for skateboarding, more time for learning about myself, about the world. Um, I guess it just, it's, it's a way for me to live being not so distracted by, by the pressures of everything else. I'm able to, like I know my bed is, I know everything is with me here wherever I go, which is a huge benefit. I would say that's the biggest benefit. Like the amount of times I've been at a dinner party and someone was missing an ingredient and I was like, one second, I got it in the van. That's a huge benefit. What kind of advice would you have for somebody that's thinking about living in a van? Don't do it, no. Um, that was a joke. I'd say just maybe rent one first. Try it first, then make a decision, an informed decision based on how you feel with your experience. I would say that would be a... How do you make sure that he sort of is able to have a good life in the van? Like, oh. what, what do you do to specifically look after him and in, in his cat needs? I make sure that his cat litter is clean every two days. I make sure that he's got clean water and he's always fed. And I let him basically do whatever he wants in here. Like, this is his scratching post right here. And uh, he's done some scratching on the seat behind you as well. But basically, again, to, to most people, like a cat scratching on their belongings or like a leather seat, that would be like detrimental. People, someone, someone might think to discipline the cat, but I feel like it's the opposite. Like I have to discipline myself to be okay with certain things because the chair is replaceable the cat is not. To keep him happy, I bring him outside every day. Uh, I spend at least 15 minutes of like affection time with him. He's happy and content. He doesn't have a problem laying around and, and making himself comfortable. It's definitely different when the van starts moving. He'll, he'll sit on the seat and that's his spot. Why did you go the DIY route instead of buying something uh, that was pre-made? That's a good question. I, I feel like I've, I, it was a no brainer for me to go DIY because I've always been crafty with my hands, arts and crafts. My grandfather was a woodworker. He taught me everything I know, uh, the basics. And then I kind of just expanded from there, but it just, this is a way for me to be creative. I show my creativity was this. Yeah. So that's why I went the DIY route going back to the challenges of van life i feel like that was one of the challenges is letting go of all the belongings because for me it, it boiled down to understanding that i had traded my time 
for money to then be able to buy the things that I possessed and then holding that tangible thing with that understanding of how it was acquired it was hard to just let it go so it was it was very important for me to downsize at a slow rate not just jump into it so like when I decided to downsize and, and to start the process basically like day one was open your wallet go through your wallet whatever you don't need get rid of and then like day two was like books go through your books the ones that you really want keep and then by like day five I was in like into the wardrobe and and whatnot but by day five I had the mentality and it was easy for me to start getting rid of things it was like I could feel the weight off my shoulders like just by getting rid of those things yeah I would say it was it's it's moving forward it's empowered me to make better decisions when buying an item so I, I won't just buy something on impulse I mean I'm not perfect I still do uh, but I, I definitely put a thought or two into it beforehand oh how do I shower baby wipes um, truck stops your friends ah man this was such an easy question pre-covid uh, but since since the whole pandemic kind of shifted things uh, but without shame, like, I definitely go sometimes three weeks without, like, a legit full shower. Uh, but uh, I guess to keep myself clean, just use baby wipes and uh, grab a shower whenever you can. In the summer, just jump in the lake. Counts, right? I feel like yeah, living in a van for four years, I've been able to learn a few things about myself one it, more about like humanity itself i feel like or humans like we're very adaptable like in terms of different scenarios different situations different climates like we are super adaptable and it does not take long for us to adapt i have learned that i'm way more patient than i thought i was i have learned that i have way more inner peace than i thought i did I think those are like the main things. Just been able to learn how to manage my money better. Definitely. For someone who is looking to convert a van themselves, I would say just don't be afraid. Just just jump into it. You make a mistake, you learn from it. And just one one big thing I would say to someone who wants to go DIY is try it before you build it. Try it before you build it, because we've. I see. I see it all too often, where, and I've done it myself. Where you think you need something, and then you build it, and it turns out you don't actually need it, and that could be uh, space. That could be resources. So yeah, try it before you build it. Just don't even care what other people think. Like if you want to do it do it for you don't do it for anybody else I would say that definitely because it could be it could be daunting to be like the the outsider they'll say but don't yeah just don't be afraid of what people think about you if you feel good inside and yeah, just follow that I would say my philosophy on life is to remain open to everything at the same time attached to nothing I guess the idea behind that uh, is we're always so quick to be attached to our own beliefs in our own ways and I think it would be healthy if we can have an open mind to things but like you don't necessarily have to agree if people are interested in finding out more in, in this journey in particular um, there's the Instagram platform uh, the golden mullet and don't be afraid to reach out. Uh, I like chatting with y'all and, and learning about you guys. If you enjoyed that and want to check out more alternative dwellings, we have a playlist popping up that is all the episodes that we've ever done. There's van tours, tiny home tours, sailboats, off-grid, uh, garden tours, all sorts of cool stuff. So check that out. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode.